Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how to debounce a button with hardware components. Before I start the video, many thanks to you for supporting me, for liking my videos and commenting. I'm really happy to see that some people like my videos and comment to give me feedback. And I'm very happy also to help you to make some great projects. So thank you very much for that. So as I told before, in today's video, I want to show you how to debounce a button with hardware components. So let's get started. <music> When you press a button, you may expect a signal looking like this, but actually the signal is more looking like this one here, with bounces. You can see, in the reality, when we press a button, we will get some bounces. And these bounces can cause some problems in our program. So to avoid those problems, we need to debounce the button. If you want to know where these bounces came from, I will put you a link on the top right corner to my button module video where I explain this. There are two different ways to get rid of these bounces problems. The first one is the hardware approach, where we use hardware components to smooth the bounces out. And the second one is the software approach where we are detecting these bounces and don't count them as a button press. In this video, I will focus on the hardware approach. The circuit you can see here is the circuit that I use to debounce my buttons in my projects. And I want to go step by step with you to explain you what actually happens. In step 1, we will look at the behavior of the button without a debounce circuit. In step 2, we will add a resistor and a capacitor, also called an RC circuit, to the button. And in step 3, we will add a Schmidt trigger. After this, you should have a nice debounced signal. So let's start with step 1. The first step is basically just the button without any debounce components. When the button is not pressed, we will get 5 volt. When we press the button, we will get some bounces and then the signal will drop down to ground. When we release the button, we will have bounces again and then the signal goes up to 5 volt. So to get rid of these bounces, we will use the RC circuit. So let's move on to step 2. Before I show you how the result will be, I want to explain you how the RC circuit works. The capacitor in this circuit has two states. The first one is the charging state and the second one the discharging state. Let's begin with the charging state. In the charging state, the capacitor will charge energy. The voltage will rise and behaves like the green voltage curve here. After some time, the capacitor will fully charge and will have the same voltage as the supply. And the current will drop down until there is no more current flowing in the circuit. So when the capacitor is fully charged, there is no more current flowing anymore. What is important to understand is that the capacitor will charge slowly until it's fully charged. Then it will get 5 volts. Now let's have a look on the discharge behavior of the capacitor. At the beginning, the capacitor is fully charged and will discharge like the green voltage line here. And if the voltage decreases, the current also decreases. So what you need to keep in mind here is that the discharging behavior look like this here and the charging behavior look like this here. Now that I showed you how the RC circuit or the capacitor behaves, we can move on to our debounce problem. Now in step 2 we add this RC circuit. So let's see how this behaves now. If the button is released, we will get the same behavior as previously. So we get 5 volts. Now if I press the button, we will get this weird looking signal in blue. 
So what happens here is that when the voltage drops down to zero volt, the capacitor will start discharge slowly. And when the voltage rises to 5 volt, it will start charge slowly. When this bounce period is over, the capacitor will discharge completely. Now, if I release the button, we will get the same behavior as previously. During this bounce time, the capacitor will charge when we have 5 volts and will discharge slowly when we have 0 volts. When this bounce period is over, the capacitor will charge completely. So this is basically what happens when we debounce a button with an RC circuit. But as you can see, the signal is not very good looking. We can do better than this. For this, we are going to add a Schmidt trigger in step 3. So let's go to step 3. Here I also want to explain you briefly how the Schmidt trigger works before I show you the output signal with the Schmidt trigger. There are two different types of Schmidt trigger, the inverting one and the non-inverting ones. In our case we are using the inverting Schmidt trigger to get 5V when we press the button and 0V when the button is not pressed. What you need to know is that a Schmidt trigger has a positive threshold voltage and a negative threshold voltage. Each time you go from one threshold voltage to another threshold voltage, the output signal will be pulled up or pulled down. In the case you have an inverting Schmidt trigger, when you go from the positive threshold voltage to the negative threshold voltage, the signal will be pulled up. And when you go from the negative threshold voltage to the positive threshold voltage, the signal will be pulled down. What you can also see is when the signal is crossing several times the same threshold level, there is no changes in the output. And this is due to the hysteresis effect. When your input signal is under the positive threshold voltage, the output signal will stay high. At the moment you cross the positive threshold voltage, the signal will be pulled down to ground. When you start with a voltage that is over the negative threshold voltage, until you reach this negative threshold voltage, the signal will stay low. At the moment you cross the negative threshold voltage, the output signal will go up and stay up until you cross the positive threshold voltage. For the non-inverting Schmidt trigger, we will have the same logic but inversed. When we go from a positive threshold level to a negative threshold level, the signal output will be pulled down instead of pulled up. Same thing for when we start with the negative threshold voltage and go to the positive threshold voltage the signal will be pulled up instead of be pulled down. So now that I showed you briefly how the Schmidt trigger works, we can move on to our debounced circuit. Here you can see our green behavior without the RC circuit and our blue behavior with the RC circuit. On top of that, we will add our behavior with the Schmidt trigger in red. What happens now is when I when the button is opened or not pressed, we will get zero volt because of the inverting Schmidt trigger. Now if I press the button, the signal will remain zero volt until the blue line crosses the negative threshold voltage of the Schmidt trigger. Then the signal will go up to 5 volts. When I release the button, the signal will remain 5 volt until the blue line crosses the positive threshold voltage of the Schmidt trigger. Then the output signal will be pulled down. And this is how we get some sharp edges and a very clean signal without bounces. So this was the debounce circuit that you can use for your projects in order to debounce your buttons. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'll be very happy if you let me a feedback in the comment section. Thanks for watching, leave a like, share, subscribe and see you next time.
Thank <laughs> you.